I want my daughter to see that mommy is a girl, yes, but she can do it. I want to be her role model. The Eric Show, inspiration, motivation. One vision, hope to one new generation. Together we can live and learn. Yes, we're one family. I'm the Eric Show. My guest today describes herself as an overcomer, faced dangerous situations, grave challenges that could have easily caused her to give up on life. The beautiful Asia Thomas is here with us. Asia, how are you? How are you? I am good. How are you? I'm fine. I'm grateful. I'm Great. blessed. You're looking, You're good. looking yeah. good. Yeah. You're looking good? I'm yeah. good? All right. Yeah. Cool. You're looking good too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man. Thank you for your time. It's, a, it's my pleasure. I'm Asia. honored to be here. Asia. Yes, Elry. We have been talking about having this conversation that we're about to get into. Right. How are you feeling now in this moment? Most persons will, will give up, go in a shell, hibernate for years upon years upon years, can't find them, nothing, just going through what I've been through. So to be here today, you know, sitting down, having a conversation with you, I'm honored. I'm feeling blessed. Wow. We're going to start from early. Take me to your childhood. Well. What was life like with <laughs> mommy, daddy? Take me to that side. My dad, he was there, you know, but I think the relationship between him and my mother was more affecting he, my and his relationship. So. And how was that? Well, what was happening? Well, you know, like common family issues that often occur in nowadays families, especially in Jamaica. We don't have that unity, you know? So I didn't really grow up seeing unity. So I was really fending for myself from a young age. Fending for yourself? Yes, like, there was just something in me to say, you know, all right, um, something needs to be done. And I actually realized it. And I said, no man, I want help. I want to try to fix this. Trying to fix what exactly at, at a young age? And what well, age I was that? I would say family, because going to school, I always saw like mom and dad dropping off my friends, and I was just there being dropped off probably by my mom. I actually used to walk from my house to school every morning. My mom would take me, she would walk with me. But I would say probably that's literally like the bond we had. But in terms of having a discussion with me to say, all right, baby girl, the world is rough out there. So certain things, don't fall for it, or don't take this from strangers, or, you know, she never really, she never really meant me for the world. Like, I wish I got that, but I didn't. So to fast forward, I would say, I was always trying to find unity then. So going to school, I always found myself trying new things, which would be um, talking more to friends. So, because I'm not finding the conversation at home. So I gone to school trying to see if friends could probably take my mind off of it or something, you know, because my mother and father just, they're so busy nag, 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 nagging, and they don't recognize, hello, I'm here. A child is here, a child is supposed to be doing or seeing the right thing so I can execute properly for the future. And you're talking about at what age when you began to understand everything? <laughs> um, I would say like, like grade one. Mm -hmm. yes, Six, grade seven, one. Right. Grade one was the first ever heartbreak I got like and understood it because to be honest, um, because of what my parents were um, experiencing, I literally missed one whole year of school. Mm -hmm. One, okay. And I'm like, what's wrong? What's happening? I want to go to school. Can't go so to you school. were living with both mom and daddy? I was living with my, my mom and grandma. Mm -hmm. Yes, but you know, dad will come visit. But every time it's an argument, so tired of it, so tired of it. And by the time I look, my friend's gone. The friends that I was, you know, trying to take my mind off things by speaking to, 
I'm going to need a repeat. So right away now, I have something to overcome because, you know, they're probably thinking, oh, she's probably just not smart or, you know, how right. younger kids are. So from that time, I know I had to pull up my socks and just do me for me. At six years old? Basically, yep. So from that time now, I got to finish, finish off prep school, going to second grade. And I was doing terrible in terms of performance. And would I get cussing? So I'm like, what do you guys want me to do? You know? But I tried actually make it in the top 10. Yeah. What? Top. <laughs> yeah. Not far in, still probably 10. Mm -hmm. But I could have said that from when I saw that I gave him 10, I was like, no man, can't give up. So from that time, keep going, keep going. Then I start making things to sell. So like what we were making at, at six, seven years old now. To like, say. there are some crochet bracelets. So I used to go home and stick it on to my side table. And mm -hmm. when I sit and make them, and I say, yeah, may I carry this to school <laughs> and see if I can sell it. So I carry it and I sold one. I come home, tell mommy. She's not really fascinated. She just there. And grandma working hard. So really and truly, you have to be there as a mother, as a female, to tell me, you know, right from wrong, or give me a little head start or a little heads up, because that's what I'm doing now with my daughter, you know, and I know my mom went through some things which she probably feel embarrassed about or whatever, but I wish you can just, just loosen up now and say, hey, Asia, look here, you know, such and such happened, you try nobody to do it, but what? Some of them end up reaching me because I had to go out in the world early trying to help. If she's the same one, trying to help her, trying to help out my grandmother, trying to keep the house together. That's, that was just me. I love a home, I love unity, I love togetherness. You know? All right. We'll take a break. When we come back, we continue our conversation with Asia Thomas. Welcome back to the show. We continue our conversation with Asia Thomas. All right, Asia, early in our conversation, you said that you wished your mommy had said to you, do not do this, do not go here, be careful of your friends. Why do you keep saying that? What happened? Hi, uh, Rick. As I said, as you can see, our, we've been, we, we've, we're familiar with each other for years yes, now, right? right? And I'm always trying, always putting myself together. But as I said, sometimes it attracts the wrong people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you know when they say, watch your drink? When you go out, don't turn your back on your drink. Don't leave it to go to the bathroom or anything. But me thinking that I had a friend with me, just turn to the bathroom and come back. And you went to a party? We was like a gathering. Gathering. Yes. Okay. At a house? With a restaurant. A restaurant. Oh. Mm. Restaurant. <laughs> yes. Um, so I, me thinking that she's my friend at the time. How old were you then? I was about 19 mm -hmm. or 18, one of, there, around old teen, almost young adult, right. kind of, yeah. So I left and I came back, Alric, and I don't remember a thing. <laughs> Only to know that I woke up somewhere where I know I wasn't. You know, and when I woke up and I didn't see her, but strangers. And <laughs> the first thing I did was prepare myself to leave because clearly, but you know, I woke up and I was like, all right, cool, my dear, <laughs> go. You have to leave. This is not right. Because you're wondering what's next. Yeah, so. 
a call, a cab, leave. But that is what I'm talking about with my mother. What Should did you, when you, when you came to consciousness, what did you understand by it? What, what was the understanding? What happened? I'm sure it's pretty obvious, you know? And I must say on the December, the Christmas day, Christmas day to be exact, I was blackmailed by what happened, saying, you know, if you don't do it again, you will be exposed. So, <laughs> Alric, I feel my heart. My heart must reach Negril and so come what, back so, in my so chest. So they made a video? Yes. Oh. So, wow. so it's like it carried me right back to square one. About how many persons you saw in that room? Did you reach out to that friend? No, I don't even. I think I ended up blocking her and all because knowing the person I am, I try. I why I can like wipe out negativity, wipe out bad stuff that happened because, as I said, I didn't really have anyone at home to confide in. So I just kind of make it breeze over, I guess. All the lessons I learned, it's time now to do the right thing, right? So I opened a restaurant in 2020, right? And you remember them said, don't mix family and business. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I got to develop that little hungry go-getter, go for it. Yes, I'm a girl, but I can do it and stuff. So I said to mommy, I said, come into the business, right? And she said, okay. And I said, all right. So we opened the business and I was pregnant at the time, still doing a lot of groundwork, running up and down with big belly, carrying goods up and down stairs. You know, I just, I was excited. I was yeah. hungry. Like even with the pregnancy, I was like, no man, I still want to make her proud. So I even showing her that even pregnant, Pregnancy can't stop greatness. You can do it. So I didn't really want to disappoint her. Right. No matter what, I just don't want to disappoint her, you know? So I continued pushing through and I said, all right, time to open now. Nice, nice, nice place. What kind of business? It was a restaurant. A so restaurant, yeah, right. we sold seafood, cooked food, you name it, Chinese. It was a cultural restaurant, so. You know, she started coming late. <laughs> and me still pushing through, waking up early, doing Instagram promotion and everything, and saying, yeah, man, the restaurant, it have to work, it have to work. We have to do this. Mommy, you'll be better, everything will work out. Because remember, Jamaica is hard, you know? Jamaica is yes. hard. And being a woman in business, even harder, because males, some males don't have limits. Right, that's something I'll tell any female in business. Stand firm and never drag into temptation. Cause you know, it's there, especially being, what am I saying, pretty? Yeah. <laughs> or beautiful, which yeah, I'm grateful. And you are, <laughs> you are beautiful, you are beautiful. Right, and um, so, you know, eventually things weren't adding up. It didn't, it wasn't feasible for me because um, barely started getting bigger. And you know, Alric, even with the belly, me walking up and down, I give out flyers, mm. telling people, come, 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 the restaurant is open. With big belly, you know, and I say somebody must say, no man, this girl determined. Because I'm like, yes, you have to nurture a business. If you want it, nobody can do it for you but yourself, right? So that's also what I wanted to show her, that mommy, we can do it. All right, we take a break. When we come back, we continue this interesting conversation with Asia. We continue our conversation with Asia. Asia, why do you still keep trying to do everything 
that you believe will help your mother or to lead your mother to love you the way that you want to be loved? Well, you see, even though I didn't experience that nurturing love and care that I would hope for from her, I just naturally know that she's supposed to as a mother and she's still alive and I'm not going to give up on her because I have a daughter and I don't want my daughter to be absent of a grandmother then. What do you want your daughter to see from you? From, from her mother? Because I know you're having your struggles with your mother, but for you, what do you want your daughter to see from you and to experience from you? Well, honestly, I'd love her to see that mommy is a fighter, mommy is a warrior, and no matter what, you have, you got to have you never mm -hmm. depend on anyone for anything. So right now, as I said, things aren't perfect, but I'm a trained woman, so I have my business now, showing my daughter that, listen, if you get opportunities to better yourself, do it. I mean, I'm basically a nurse now, because I just finished nursing school. Congrats. <laughs> so Good. I'm showing my daughter that you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, right? I am also a chef, mm -hmm. and I also have a charity. Yeah, what, 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 what's charity about? Well, it's called YPBH 2018. I started in 2018, mm -hmm. and that's just from me to the kids. Because as I said, growing up, we don't know what's going on, so to show them a little light, mm -hmm. that, that warms my heart. So I want my daughter to see that Mommy's a girl, yes, but she can do it. And she tomboyish too, so you see, because yeah. me love the cars and the thing and the thing, she can roll with me. She yeah. doesn't need no only friend, right? So I want to be her role model. What's the name of your business, your food business? Pasta plates. Oh. Right, in baddest pasta plates. <laughs> <Right. laughs> yes, so I just want to continue doing the best, adding value to myself each day so that she can say, why? My mommy that, you know, pick her up in the fat ride and things. She <laughs> said, my mommy that, you know, when I pick her, I'm just excited to show her that she can do it. So what happened to the business um, with mommy? You eventually had to let her out of the business? What happened? And I eventually had to close down because I couldn't manage anymore. I was hoping to let her be the head eventually and you know, run it off until baby come and I can be able to go back there and so forth. But mommy just, mommy, a couple of years after, I opened a store in Hagley Park Plaza, Shop 5C Hagley Park Plaza. And, uh, you know, uh, before I rented the place, it was a huge place. And I said, what am I going to do here? am I going to do here? So I ended up going there every day and I start putting some sticks and, you know, parting up the place and say, yeah, I'm going to get six shops from this place and rent it to small business owners because mm -hmm. I was always onto something to say, you know what, let me give small business owners a chance because they're often shunned. Yep. So Asia, <laughs> you're always trying yep. to save somebody else. That's what I recognize so lately. You think that's your purpose? I said it, you know. I said, I wonder if I'm here to write the, the guide li for life. And then somebody learned from me, like Rosa Parks or something. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, if that's the case, then, then just say what they say. Yeah, give the strongest soldiers the hardest fight, right? Hardest so, battles, yeah. Yeah, I ended up opening that store and I had some issue there. And I went to deal with it as the landlord. And you know what one of the tenants said to me? I just said, well, move from me. So that's why you have a boat there or whatever. So I was like, Why? I don't know. I don't know how I continue to swear. <laughs> I 
don't know who I can't tell you, but I do. Nobody understands. Right, so in that moment, my dear. Still continue. That's why I took the opportunity to come here because you know sometimes when I'm in, when I'm in encounters with people, sometimes mm -hmm. I wonder if in the back of their head they're th you're thinking that. Yeah. But well, let me tell you something, Asia. You are not that video. You're more than that video. And the persons who did this to you, they are the monsters. They are the video, actually. But that's not you. What I'm seeing here, and what I know from a longer time, that your soul is pure. And I wonder why. You do, and you just want others to just recognize this, that yeah. your soul is pure, and you just want good for yourself and, and good for everybody else. Always. And somebody told me I'm too kind or whatever, but yeah. I say, boy, I'm not going to change. This is how God made me. I'm just like a continue push push through mm -hmm. and I must must make it must must make it the way I would like of course because yeah. you know we face obstacles we have to overcome then once we have life we have everything so I'm just gonna continue push through let me tell you I am so proud of you Asia and thank you for having the courage to come on this show to talk to release yourself and to help you on your healing journey and most importantly, too, your story. Trust me, I know it's causing a lot of change right now. Because I'm sure viewers are watching too, and they too have had similar experiences. Which and this some go through it worse. Worse. <laughs> right. And this right now is to help them on the journey to healing. Yes, they can do it. They can do it. Let's take a different approach. Thank you so much for Regardless. coming on the show. Mm, Let me hug you, Asia. <laughs> <laughs> Let me hug you. <laughs> love you. Love you. Love, love you too. You. It's all love. All yeah. love. One love. All right. I want to thank Asia Thomas for sharing with us today on the Arik Show. I hope her story has helped you to get closer to where you want to get to on your journey of healing. I'm Arik McKenzie. The Arik Show will be back next week. Thanks, man.